So we'll start this video with five people are dead from flesh-eating bacteria in the Tampa Bay area because uh, they went swimming in brackish water. Now what is brackish water? Well it's water that's just kind of laying around with mosquitoes flying all over it. Why in the living heck would these people be swimming <laughs> in brackish water? And to die from flesh-eating bacteria, I tell you, that's why you got to live life every day, right? You got, you got to, you could die from anything. You might fall downstairs and break your neck like I did, and then spend three months in the hospital. There you go. So um, anyway, the uh, the theme of today's video is going to be the dying United States Empire. But before we get into that, I always try to help you a little bit. So let's give you just today's story so that you can uh, prepare for things like this. So. I ordered windows for my house, uh, coastal windows, back in July of 2022. Yes, that's the year, 2022. And uh, they came in, they put them in once, they put them in wrong, and they came back, and, and one of them was broken, one of them was missing, one of them had a blemish. This is Renewal by Anderson, by the way, supposedly uh, one of the more reputable companies. I'm just calling them out on it. You know, the truth is the truth, right? So, uh... Today they were supposed to finish the project, and I, I get a phone call. I'm you know I'm all pumped up. I'm like, oh, Melly, it's only been over a year. I can't wait to finally have this thing done. I mean, I still if you ever watch my videos, the sticker you have to leave the sticker on the window uh, so that when the, uh, the the inspector here in Florida comes to look at the windows, he can see that sticker. Well, I've had that sticker on my windows for a year. Now imagine if you were married, <laughs> your wife, you pull them stickers off and then you can put them back on. No, I'm not gonna pull them off. Well, you can imagine the arguments on that one. So anyway, the, the moral of the story is, uh, you know, cause we're, when I get into the death of the US empire, you're gonna understand why I'm talking about all of this. Cause I want you, your assignment is to start looking around and thinking what, do I need to get done? Because guess what? If what I'm predicting, if what I'm going to talk about in this video happens, you're not going to be able to get people to work on your house. Those windows might not ever go into your house. That new roof might not ever happen. That new washer and dryer may be unattainium. That uh, new dishwasher may be unattainium. Uh, that uh, electrical upgrade, you might not be able to get an electrician unless you got something to barter with. And who knows, they might not want to be working, you know, if the, if when when the stuff hits the fan. So that's what I can, and then of course, you know, uh, I've preached this many, many times, look around at your food, okay? What, do you have enough green beans? Do you have enough beans? You know, because when you, you got it, that stuff, it has a shelf life, you know, only a couple, three years or so. But make sure you have an ample supply. Like today, I, I've got uh, four containers of, um, laundry detergent and I used up one and so now I got room in my cabinet I'm gonna buy another one that'll give me five containers of laundry detergent so if something happens and the, the supply chain is broken which we know it already is you know I've got ample supply I can go six months a year doing laundry not have to worry about it and there's alternate things that you can do for laundry so that's the first part of this video we'll get into the US Empire it's uh it's a bit more toasty out here than <laughs> I thought it was going to be. I because uh, and that's what another thing you know since they couldn't do the windows, I wanted to take advantage of the day where there's almost like a zero percent chance of rain for once, so I can actually get out here. But at 93 degrees with the humidity, I guess there must be a heat index over about 100, 105. Because man, look at look at that. Woo! I am sweating up a storm. All right. But sweat, 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 sweat's good for you, baby. I was getting winded. <laughs> so I had to, I wanted to sit down and, and make the next clip. So the first thing about a dying empire is when you have a criminal organization that's running the country. And that's exactly what we have. We don't have a justice department. We have an injustice department. Um, you know, if you just follow along on the Hunter Biden story, I, I need I say more. Uh, they do everything they can to protect the uh, the politicians and their relatives and and, uh, and of course we all know how rich uh, most of the people in Congress have become. Uh, Nancy Pelosi probably owns like three mansions. Or Barack Obama's living in Martha's Vineyard. You don't make that on a government salary. That's corruption to, to the core, to the heart. 
of the federal government. We no longer have a federal government. We have a criminal mafia organization running the country and the FBI is the strong arm of the uh, federal government. We have a weaponized uh, legal system. If you wanna think about it, uh, you know, George Bush committed more crimes than any president. He tortured prisoners. Uh, when I was fighting in Iraq, uh, the first thing that we did was we went and took the oil fields away from Iraq. That was the main point of that war. It wasn't about, uh, uh, well, of course, they wanted to Saddam Hussein out. So we did that too. That got, it. got a lot more coming. Right, let me uh, get to the rest of the video in just a minute. The uh, judges are bought and paid for. You know, you've got criminal prosecution after criminal prosecution against the number one candidate of the opposition party. That's a banana republic. That's not a country. You, have, you don't have a country anymore. The United States has ceased to exist as a nation. Okay. Uh, if when we look at the view of the rest of the world, uh, I, I dare say that the United States and, of course, our Western allies in Europe have done everything to piss off every country in the world. I, 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 I doubt there's very many countries that want to ally themselves with the United States. What, the Afghan pullout was a complete disaster. That's, is that how you treat your allies? Because that's what we did. It was the worst disaster in the history of the United States next to the Vietnam War. Uh, we haven't won a war since World War II. Uh, we spend more on military spending, our military industrial complex, than any nation in the world. And yet we're getting our asses throttled by the Russians in Ukraine in a proxy war. So, anyway, I'll continue on with this video. i got to get back to my hike. Let's, uh, let's just keep going. So the next thing I wanted to talk about <clears throat> is the lies. You're lied to about everything. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't even think the Soviet Union, Pravda, you know, that was the newspaper, and I think in the Soviet Union, there, and of course their news, uh, of course we had radio-free uh, Europe uh, beamed into Russia. What we need have now is uh, TV-free Russia beamed into the United States. <laughs> I swear I get, I get more news from Russian television than I get from uh, anything on on in any of the uh, United States uh, media channels. Of course, the YouTube. Uh, YouTube has a lot of great creators who are very, very in tune with what's taking place, but unfortunately, a lot of them are shadow banned. The fact that you're watching this video is a miracle. <laughs> I mean, I've been shadow banned on, on YouTube. I've been making, if you ever look back, I probably have 500, 600 videos or something like that. I don't know what I'm up to now. I, I got to go back and clean some of it up. I've been cleaning some of it up, just to delete old videos. But you can't find that cybersecurity guy. You know, do a search. Go up and do a search at the at, on the search thing. And say that cybersecurity guy. You'll you'll get all kinds of hits except for my channel, even though I've been around forever. Now I am starting to get a few followers because I'm posting links to the videos on the new X, and that will lead people to watch a video occasionally on my my channel on uh on youtube and then 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 you can they can subscribe to my channel but that's the only way that i you know, i get anybody to watch any of my videos but uh the fact the, the reason that you have a dying empire the dying u.s empire is you know the the media was supposed to be the fourth arm of government they were another check and balance that our forefathers wisely put in place so that uh we could learn you know what corruption or anything that's going on with the government now they are just part of the government and so this has com been completely taken over and how did that happen well it's the same way your government was taken over we have a bunch of oligarchs the donors as uh, Colonel Douglas McGregor hopefully you watch that video I put up a good video about him uh, and then of course I uh, there's still a lot of people talking about Maui I put up a good video on that I don't want to repeat those videos uh, but anyway, um, the government is completely captured by the oligarchs, the donor class. So it, it cares nothing about you or me, because the five dollars that you send into a campaign doesn't mean anything. So I mean, just if, if you just look at Maui, I mean, it's an insult. Seven hundred and fifty dollars per person. For, and by the way, I, I don't know. I I talked about this. I thought in another video that this is the most disturbing thing. You know, of course, children burned. Everybody burned, but the thing was they found in these nursing homes, these old people that were all huddled together, 
you know, and that just all it was was a, a, a mound of, of burnt old people bodies in the nursing homes. And they're going to get $750 from, from the buy. And that just shows you right there that the government cares nothing about the people. You know, you've got $200 billion that has been sent to a war in Ukraine. And if you ask the average American citizen... So the phone, <laughs> once again, overheated right there. At least it didn't explode into flames. Uh, but I wanted to say, if you ask the average American citizen about, uh, you know, where is Ukraine located? How much money have we sent to Ukraine and how could that money have been used for the American people? Uh, you know, and of course it's, you know, it's, it's over 200 billion. Actually, the, the estimates are that with the military equipment right now, I think we're up to $500 billion that we have spent on Ukraine in a uh, losing cause. And of course, you know, there's also the bioweapons labs. If you ask an average American person, what do you think about the American bioweapons lab that we're in Ukraine? Huh? What's that? I don't know. So anyway, but the, my point being is that there's a total uh, information blackout in the United States. Uh, we're shadow banned on YouTube. Uh, you've got Rumble. Most people don't even know what Rumble is. Uh, you got Telegram. I, I doubt many Americans that you talk to would even know what Telegram is. You got Rockfin. I have to admit, I've never been a rock fan. I don't even know. And of course, now we've got the new X. Uh, but I'm seeing more and more censorship on X. Um, it, it, like I said, uh, well, Cat Turd uh, just came up and said that you know, he's being censored and uh, they're trying to drive people to the middle and some people have been banned. So, you know, it's, it's very hard to get any information in the United States. So the fourth branch of the government doesn't exist. The judicial branch doesn't exist. The, uh, the federal government is a corrupt organization, a uh, criminal organization, led by a, a, a compromised criminal who's beholden to China and Russia, who's, who's accepted paybacks. Anyway, it's just, um, and then of course you've got a Congress that's completely captured by the geo, uh, I mean the uh, oligarchs in the United States, uh, the donor class, is, uh, and a Colonel, I give Colonel Douglas McGregor, he's the one who coined that phrase, they're completely captured by them. But let's get on uh, with some other clips to the video. I We got to talk about bricks just a little bit. I got, got a good video on that. You're going to have to check that out coming up. I got some good nature stuff. Look, my, huh, let's, let's check that out right now. I don't know if I'll get this on the video or not. Check it out. A deer and it's, and it's uh, fawn right over here. Hopefully you can see it through the woods here. Okay, they're getting a good angle. Now. Oh, it's taking a dump. That's the first time I've ever seen a deer take a dump. Holy moly. <laughs> Let's get that on the video. I bet there's not many videos out there of a deer pooping in the woods. Check them out. Let's see how close I can get. Oh, boy. All right, there they go. Can you see them? I'm trying to make my way through the woods here. Oh. See, they're not hunted here, so they're not real afraid of me. Let's see. There it is, right there, huh? Can you see it? We're getting pretty close. Yeah, he's kind of moving just a little bit. There goes the little baby deer. Check him out. Oh, isn't that beautiful? There they go. All right. See you later. Bye-bye. So, story time. Seeing that little baby deer brought back a beautiful memory. I was backpacking picture rocks on a perfect day. Boy, we had perfect weather on that trip. Eight days of backpacking of just nothing but perfect temperatures, nice cool nights. Anyway, so I'm hiking along and we, Dan liked to hike by himself, so we would split up. I'd get way out in front and he would get way back where we really couldn't see each other. It's kind of like hiking alone through the trail, which is always a good way to backpack, to be honest with you. You don't want to be right on top of somebody because then you can't see. You know, you can't enjoy the nature. You're just looking at the back of the person in front of you, you know. But anyway, so uh, I'm hiking along, and he, he just happened to be a little closer than usual. And all of a sudden, something went, bam! You know, of course, I jumped up in the air. What the F was that? Bam! What the fuck? I'm looking around. I mean, of course, I'm running backwards, you know. And Dan, he always was packing, you know. He had his handgun. And, uh, and he starts laughing. And I was like, what are you laughing at, man? What the hell is that? 
It was one of those, just a little baby deer. You'd be surprised how, how loud they can scream. Scared the bejeebies out of me. He never let me live that down. I, I tell you what, my heart was racing when from that little baby deer screaming at me. And then what was funny was he followed us for a while. Now, if that ever happens to you, don't touch him. Because uh, from what I understand, and I might be wrong, is the mama deer won't take them back if they, your smell's all over them. So we kind of had to shoo that little baby deer on, but we let him follow us for a little while. It was nice to have a little baby deer following you around the woods. All right, that's the story. European leaders were aghast at what Bush had done. And some of them talked to me. And Angela they told Merkel. me. Angela not, Merkel. Not, not said, Angela Merkel personally, but no. Said, but she said no. at the time, if uh, Ukraine would be part of NATO, this would be a cause for war, of war for Russia. Even Merkel so, said it. Exactly. So this was all known. And what is so sad about the European leaders is none of them tells the truth right now. They're all so scared of the United States or of their public or of the ability to manipulate uh, the mass media and the perception from below or to speak out of line. But I know what they said because they said it to me. What's they said your... it to me personally. And by mm -hmm. the way, just as recently as a few weeks ago, one of Europe's top leaders, mm -hmm. I said to him, uh, I won't go farther to say who, but I yeah. said, you know, the day Biden says NATO's not enlarging, then we really can get to the end of the war. And he said to me, I agree with you completely. And then he said exactly the opposite the next day, by the way, in public. So I know it from my own uh, view. So this story, just to finish the story, <coughs> the disaster, the, <coughs> the fuse was lit in 2008, but then the U.S. cannot stop playing games. That's the biggest problem. U.S. foreign policy is covert. It's not that you can't figure it out, but it's secret. It's deniable. And so what happens in 2014 in February? The United States, together with right-wing nationalists in Ukraine, work together to overthrow Yanukovych. Clear as can be. And not only that, thanks to uh, the services of, uh, of Russia, uh, we even have it on tape uh, with Victoria Nuland talking to uh, U.S. Ambassador Jeffrey Piat about who the next government will be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Basically, four weeks before Yanukovych is violently overthrown. And they pick the next prime minister and explain why. It can't be Klitschko, it's got to be this one. Mm -hmm. And it just went down that way. And our newspapers, oh, they won't say a word about it. It's on tape. Oh, that doesn't matter. We can ignore it. We can ignore everything. So that's when the explosion came. The war started with the overthrow of the Yanukovych government. Now, oh, so many people, Sachs, you know, what a Putin apologist, what a conspiracy theorist. Of course, people, if you don't look a little bit or people don't tell you things, then you don't know. But let me advise uh, people just, for example, there, there's a very nice book written by a very fine scholar uh, in 2017 called covert regime change. And it's about U.S. foreign policy from 1947 to 1989. And it documents 64 covert regime change operations of the U.S. government. So that's the business of the U.S. government overthrowing other governments. They're called covert, but there's a lot of trace. I've been actually in places where governments have been overthrown. I watched and mm -hmm. then I see that the New York Times won't even report the story because it's a game from the U.S. point of view. So mm -hmm. in February 2014, the U.S. again engaged in a regime change operation and thought 
we can get away with it. Now we have a pro-NATO government. We've just overthrown the neutral government. Now we have a pro-NATO government. And immediately the new government says, yeah, we want to join NATO. And immediately the arms flows start from the United States, billions of dollars of arms flows. And this continues through Trump. It continues through the uprisings uh, in uh, the Donbass. It, it continues uh, with the Russia taking back Crimea. And then in 2021, we have a new president who some of us thought would be sane and responsible. He's, he's probably sane, he's, but he's completely irresponsible. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, three times in 2021, the United States government recommitted to Ukraine's membership in NATO at the highest levels in big security documents, as well as in the NATO summit in 2021. And that's when Putin put on the table at the end of 2021 a draft agreement for new security arrangements between the U.S. and Russia. And Putin kept saying, by the way, Look, you, you're putting Aegis missiles in Poland and Romania. They're a few minutes from Moscow. What are you putting in, in uh, those uh, missile chambers? We don't even know because you backed out of the ABM treaty. You backed out of the INF treaty. And so Putin's got a point. And now the U.S. wants to move up to the 2,300 kilometer border with Russia and for those who still think that this is, anyone who reads anything knows that this is a 30 years process. This is it's not about Putin reconstructing the Russian empire. That's a, a nice little joke told by the US security state as opposed to any of the things I've just described. But if you just go online and look at the, Russian uh, National Security Council meeting of February 21st, 2022, you get a perfectly plain explanation of what this military operation is about because Putin goes around the room and calls on everybody and calls on Lavrov, among others, and says, uh, Minister Lavrov, what is the situation with our proposals for security arrangements? And Lavrov says, Mr. President, we put them on the table and the United States has given us the formal notice that it will not negotiate on these points and that as a formal principle, the United States will not discuss NATO enlargement with Russia because it's none of our business, because mm -hmm. that is the formal foreign policy doctrine of the United States of America. Well, mm -hmm. I can't think of a stupider one, by the way, mm -hmm. to say that NATO enlargement with all that it entails, up to Russia's border is none of Russia's business, so we don't even discuss it with Russia. <clears throat> well, you might think a war could break out as a result of that, <laughs> and it has. Polar world comes hope for a future free from U.S. dollar dominance and a global order where win-win cooperation reigns supreme. For many around the world, BRICS is the vehicle that can turn that dream into a reality with an independent worldwide currency. I dream of having a common currency for countries to use in transactions so that we could be independent from the US dollar. It cannot be that we couldn't have more freedom for conducting business. I dream of BRICS having its own currency like the European Union's Euro. For now, the dollar's global hegemony is indisputable, with the greenback involved in 88% of all international transactions, and Russia, the world's most sanctioned country, has good reason to want to change the game. Last year, its banks were kicked out of SWIFT, and Half of its overseas reserves to the tune of $330 billion were frozen. It's all part of what Moscow says is the dollar being used as a weapon. I have no doubt that using your rich experience in government work and knowledge in this area, you will do your best to develop this institution, which in my opinion is very important today. It's not easy to do so under current conditions, bearing in mind what is happening with the global finances, with the use of the dollar as a political instrument. The US dollar has been greatly discredited and proved untrustworthy as a main reserve currency. It has been proven that if the issuing country suddenly has a desire to punish someone, it will abuse its position without hesitation. 
It's not just Russia looking to break away from dollar dependence. Alongside Moscow, Beijing and Brasilia have moved towards greater use of national currencies in international transactions. Brazil's reinstated president Lula da Silva has long advocated for deeper reliance on BRICS, and China considers dollar dominance to be the main source of global instability. The hegemony of the U.S. dollar is the main source of instability and uncertainty in the world economy. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the United States abused its global financial position and injected trillions of dollars into the global market, leaving other countries, especially emerging economies, to pay the price. A prime example of that instability is Afghanistan. The United Nations says six million Afghans are at risk of starving to death, and the organization's calling for $770 million in immediate humanitarian aid. Still, Washington refuses to release the $3.5 billion of frozen Afghan assets that could ease the suffering of the Afghan people, a problem that would not exist if those reserves weren't held in dollars in the United States. It's one of many similar situations that have left people looking to BRICS as a more humane alternative. The New Development Bank has taken a decision that at least 30% of new lending would be in local currency. So I think BRICS has been the catalyst to move towards greater financial independence and not being held hostage uh, by one or two currencies. Countries should proceed to establish new financial mechanisms, which will prove that it is not only the physical currency of the existing ones that can replace the dollar. The West's global influence is in decline. Countries formerly in the periphery are now asserting themselves. The world is undergoing immense change. With a multipolar economic future on the horizon, it's likely that this change will be for the better for everyone. You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna... Cut you down.